All right, now that we've established the final camera angle, we need to set the location and the size of the overall spherical panorama. And that's a two-step process. First, we have to establish the size of the object itself. And then we have to establish the size of the spherical mesh inside of that object. And we're going to do so entirely numerically. Even though you would normally use the tools, we're going to use numbers just so that you and I achieve exactly the same results. I've saved my progress as makes no sense so far.psd found inside the 05 materials folder. You can see that we're outside of the bottom seam of the sphere. So first thing I want you to do is go ahead and grab the 3D object rotate tool from the toolbox. And I want you to just confirm that the orientation options are set to zero, zero, and zero, as they should be by default. All right, next let's go ahead and select either the drag tool or the slide tool, doesn't matter which. Now the X and Y values should be set to 474.2 and 414.7. Again, those are default settings, but if you're not seeing those settings, go ahead and dial them in. I'm going to select the Z value here and change it. Now this is a big change to negative 3002.9 and then press the enter key or the return key on the Mac in order to establish that change. Now you'll see that we've moved into the object. The ground plane is now cutting through the sky. Of course, the ground plane should really cut through the ground. So we're going to make those changes to the mesh. So go over here to the layers panel, double click on the scene thumbnail to bring up the 3D panel, click on the spherical panorama mesh, which is indicated by this little wireframe cylinder icon. Then I want you to go ahead and select from the third tool slot, the 3D Mesh Rotate tool. And let's go ahead and make some tiny modifications here to the orientation values. First, I want you to change the X value to negative 0.3. And then I'm going to change the Y value to 2. So very slight modifications here. And then finally, this is the big change. I'm going to change the Z value to 80.7 and press the Enter key or the Return key on the Mac to make that change. Now, what we're doing there is we're spinning the sphere to get rid of the seam. So the seam is in back of us. However, it's still going to show up as a reflection later inside the spheres. All right, next I want you to select either the pan tool or the slide tool here in the options bar. The X value should already be set once again to 474.2. I don't know what's so magical about that number, but we're keeping it. And I'm going to change the Y value to 376.6 and then Go ahead and change the Z value to 1184.8 and press the enter or return key in order to invoke that change. Now, the ground plane is cutting near the ground, but it's still cutting over it. And there's one more change I want to make. You may recall in the previous exercise that the spherical panorama, when we got outside of it, was not a perfect sphere. It was actually shorter than it was wide or deep. And so we're going to have to go ahead and scale this panorama in kind by clicking on the scale the mesh icon here in the options bar. And you can leave the X and Y values as they are. I'm going to go ahead and change the Z value to 0 0.8 and then press the enter key or the return key on the Mac to bring up that ground level. Now you'll notice if you're seeing the ground plane, and of course if you're not, go to the view menu, choose show, and then choose 3D ground plane. But assuming that you're seeing it, you'll notice that the ground plane is still a little bit higher than the ground level. And there's a good reason for that. Once you cast a shadow on the ground plane when it's being cut like this by another object, the end of the shadow is going to be extremely abrupt. And it's not going to match this very soft edge to the landscape. So I decided to take the ground level a little bit higher, which is defined by the camera view, by the way. And that way we had a little extra wiggle room. And then we'll turn around and use a layer mask to get rid of that extraneous shadow. Now that might have seemed like a lot of busy work, but it's good busy work because it established our basic scene. In the next exercise, we're going to create our first sphere, import it into the scene, and then move it inside of the panorama.